Hi, this is Tim. Today's question comes from one of our Patreon supporters. Raul asks, I wonder if it is possible to modify the preset time of a TON instruction from the PanelView 800 in CCW. I'm doing an application and I need to modify the preset time from the HMI. This is an excellent question, and I just want to point out that this is how you get me to answer a question. Compared to Daniel, who, if you recall, made our hater series with the identical question in this offensive post. Also, thank you for being one of our Patreon supporters, because that is what funds the making of these videos. And in this video, we are going to be using a Micro 820 PLC and a PanelView 800 HMI. This is one of our PLC trainers and I'll put a link to it in the description. We're gonna start out in a new program in CCW and we'll just call this HMI preset. And for our controller, we're gonna be using a Micro 820 PLC and this is a 2080 LC2020 20 QBB and we'll select it and add to project. And whoops, I forgot to add the HMI, but now we can go right over here on our left pane and click add device to project to bring that dialog back up. And we're gonna go to graphics terminals and we're going to select a panel view 800 and we have a 2711R-T7T. We're gonna select it and add to project. And let's start with a basic start stop circuit in our PLC. So let's right click programs, add ladder diagram, and let's bring down a direct contact, examine if closed. And I have our green button wired to input four and our red button to input five. So we're going to go to the IO tab and we're going to find input four and I'm going to go ahead and label it as the green button and right below it input five I'm going to label as a red button and we're going to select the green button and then let's bring down an output energize and we're going to turn on the green light which I have wired to output zero. So we'll go to our I.O. tab and output zero will be our green light. And then let's bring a branch down and bring down an direct contact examine if closed. And we are going to go to our I.O. tab and look at that green light and then bring down one more direct contact, examine if closed. And this time we're gonna look at our red button. Now I went really fast through that because we've been over this particular rung several times. So just look in the description and I'll have a link to the entire lesson series about the Micro 820 and the Connected Components Workbench software. But first let's download this and make sure that we see how it would work like this. And if you need any help downloading your program or configuring your drivers, we have lessons on all that. So again, look down in the description. Who? And as many times as I have warned you to make sure you put your Ethernet settings in to connect to components when you create a new program, I forgot. So now we have this dialog saying, download from current Ethernet settings will result in disconnection from controller. Continue with download of Ethernet settings. Well, no, we don't want to do that. So let's click no. Now we're still downloading to the PLC. It's just not going to download those incorrect Ethernet settings. And I've got a video that kind of goes into the detail of that if you need any help on that. So now we're going to go into run mode, but we don't have those Ethernet settings in. Let's double click on our Micro 820. And you see right here, it says the settings in the project controller are different update from controller. I'm going to click that and that's going to pull the settings out of our 820 to our connecting components. Now we should have entered them correctly like we have every time, but there that fixes that. So now let's look at our program. In this program, we press the green button and the green light comes on. 
we press the red button and the green light goes out. And we've got lots of videos where we're talking about this. So I'm not gonna go into detail on it. But now what I wanna do is I wanna add a timer to it that will shut this light off after, we're gonna start with five seconds. So I'm gonna go offline and I am gonna add a branch to this output over here. Bring our output instruction into it. And then we're gonna to go to our timer tab and we're gonna bring down a TON instruction. And this TON has a PT and an ET. The PT is the preset time and the ET is the elapsed time, which in Studio 5000 and RS Logics 500 was the ACC or accumulated time. So our preset, we want to be five seconds. A really great feature, which we've been over in previous videos, that I still say is an awesome improvement if you need a static preset, is instead of having to figure out, well, I know five seconds is easy, but in RS Logics 500, we'd have a time base and we'd have to figure out if the time base was 0 0.01, then we'd need 500 units and all this stuff. In Connected Components, we can actually type five seconds. All we do is T number 5S, and that's gonna be a five second timer. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go back to our Favorites tab, and let's bring down a reverse contact examine it open. And then every time you add a timer, it comes up with a default, like right now it's T-O-N underscore one which probably in a later video, we should talk about how you can rename and make things a little tidier. But for this one, we're just gonna click on TON underscore one, and we're gonna select the Q bit, which is the done bit in Studio 5000 and RS Logics 500. So now let's put this program into our PLC, just to make sure we understand what's going on. All right, now I press my green button, my green light comes on, and five seconds later, it goes out on its own. Also, I can press my green button and I can press the red button and it goes off. But okay, now let's say that we decide that we want that time to be adjustable. Let's go offline and then let's double click on the panel view 800 that we created earlier. And I'm gonna put mine in landscape mode and first we need to put our PLC configuration in. And we already have an HMI series that goes through the details of this, so we're gonna do it fairly quickly. But our protocol is going to be Ethernet CIP, and then our IP address is gonna be 192.168.1.14. Again, if you're using one of our trainers, then the default address is gonna be 192.168.110. So that will take care of that. And then we're gonna to go to our tags and we're gonna add a tag. And we're gonna call this tag timer preset. And it is gonna be a 32-bit integer. And its address, we're gonna make timer preset. And the controller will be the one that we have, the PLC1. And now let's go to our screen. And just because I really dislike the default white screen, the one OCD thing I'm gonna have to do is change my background color. And I'm gonna change it to that color blue. And then let's go to our toolbox on the right side and let's find our entry section. And we're going to find a numeric entry. So we'll bring that in. And I'm not gonna go through any of the real formatting because we have videos on that. Mainly here, I'm gonna change our right tag to timer preset. And also our indicator tag will be timer preset. Now let's go to our PLC program. And let's add another rung. And first let's bring down an instruction block. 
and we're going to put in an any to, and we want to find time. And that is the conversion of an any to a timer variable. So bring that in. And then for our source, let's go to global variables. And we want to create one called timer preset. And that is a dent. Bring that in. And then we want to create a second variable and it will be, let's call it timer preset T-O-N, just because I can't think of anything real original really fast. And its data type is going to be a time. Now, we're going to take that same timer preset T-O-N and we're going to replace this T number 5S up here. So timer preset T-O-N. I just thought about it. I want to change the data type of this timer preset. So in our PLC program, let's go to that tag. And instead of being a dent, let's make it a real because if it's a dent, I can only put two seconds in or three seconds in, but as a real, I could put two and a half. So I think that makes for a more versatile HMI example. Also in our HMI tags, we'll need to change that also. From a 32-bit integer, let's make it a real. Let's go ahead and download this program. Now it's not perfect yet. We still have one more thing to do, but I wanna make sure we understand exactly what is going on here. So go ahead and download your programs. And if you need any help downloading your HMI program, also we have a whole lesson series on it. Okay, so I'm back online and we can see that our preset time is at zero. And right now our timer preset is at zero. So let's put a value in so we can see what this any to time does. So I'm gonna put a value of 500 in here. And now we can see that our timer preset tag is 500. And also we have 500 milliseconds. So the any to time is gonna take whatever value that you put into it and turn it into milliseconds. But let's say we don't want milliseconds. First I entered it as five seconds. Let's talk about the math to do that. Let's go offline. And then milliseconds are gonna be seconds times 1000. Let's just go to our instruction block, bring it down, and we're gonna do a multiply. I1 is going to be timer preset, and I2 is gonna be 1000. Now this is important. Because I wanted to be able to put decimals in, I need to specify decimal on this 1000. If I just put 1000 and enter, it will take whatever is in the timer preset, do the math, and it won't account for that decimal place. But if I put 1000.0, then it will account for it. And that probably, that may be worth its own video. And now we need to store it somewhere. And I'm just gonna store it in a tag called timer preset ms. Now at this point, we are still a real number. So leave that as a real. Let's bring that down and then let's change the input of our any to time to that timer preset ms. So let's download that. So now our timer preset is still at 500. Now our preset in milliseconds is 500,000. And by the time we do our any to time, and this again, I just think they have done an excellent job of scaling this, is instead of it saying 500,000, whatever's, is we can see that it's eight minutes and 20 seconds. And if we do the math on that, let's just throw a calculator up here real quick. We have 500 divided by 60. So we know we have eight whole minutes there. Well, eight times 60 is gonna be 480. And yeah, 500 minus 480 is 20. So there you go, eight minutes and 20 seconds. And that's just really readable. Now that's a little bit longer than I wanna wait in this video. So I'm gonna change my preset back to five. 
And now we can see our preset is five. And if I hit the green button, our green light comes on. And five seconds later, our green light goes out. Now, let's take it a step further. While we're here, let's say that we wanted it in minutes. So to get from minutes to seconds, we'll need to multiply whatever value we enter by 60. So like if we put one minute in, it'll end up with a value of 60 for seconds. And then we'll also need to multiply that by a thousand to get it to milliseconds. So whatever value we enter, we want to multiply by 60,000. So let's go offline and let's change this multiplier here to 60,000.0. And let's download that. Okay, so now our five ends up being right here. It says five minutes. Again, I really have grown so fond of this timer data type because it does the math for you to figure out exactly what it is. Now, I don't want to wait five minutes in this video. So let's make our preset point 0.1. Uh-oh. Okay, I have a small problem with my numeric entry, and you're probably going to run into it also is if I go over to my HMI screen and I click on my data entry, then down here, see decimal point is fixed. That's what it defaults to. I'm not a super fan of that. I would love to figure out how to make it default to keypad controlled. Now we'll be able to control the decimal place with the keypad. So let's go ahead and download that. And now, we can enter 0.1, and that's going to be 0.1 minutes. And we could see that our math going through here, that's going to be six seconds. So I press the green button, the green light comes on, and six seconds later, the green light goes out. So there's how you can change your timer preset from an Allen Bradley PanelView 800 PLC. So I hope this video has been helpful, Raul, and please give this video a like and subscribe to our channel. Till next time. Hi, this is Till. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.